Raju Law is one of the top immigration law firms in the USA. 100 officers, including law clerks and case managers, work in different departments under the supervision of attorney Raju Mahajan and other associate attorneys in the United States. The success rate of Raju Law is over 99% in fulfilling the dream of people from other parts of the world. Family-based, employment-based, asylum, and green card-related services are available under one umbrella in Raju Law. In addition, this law firm is one of the best in the United States for obtaining services related to NIW, writ of mandamus, and student visas. The headquarter of Raju Law is in Washington, D.C., metropolitan area. We have a branch office in Atlanta, Georgia, to reach the services easily of Raju Law to everyone living in Georgia. Besides, we have a country office in Bangladesh. The contact address and phone number are shown for any immigration-related services. You can also email info at rajulaw.com. Raju Law is your safe address for assistance and advice regarding immigration to America. Hello, and I'm welcoming you all to the weekly live session of Attorney Raju Mahajan and Associates. For today's live session, I am your host, Isabella Rosario, and with me, I have none other than the founder and the principal attorney of Raju Laws, which is Mr. Mahajan. Mr. Mahajan, it is a thrill to have you here with us today. Thank you very much, Isabella, for uh, hosting this show, and thanks all of our audience who are watching now or watch later in our Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. So, Mr. Mahajan, for today we have prepared a very special topic that I'm sure many people are enthusiastic about. We are often very worried about filing NIW petitions, but I think one point that a lot of people miss out is what happens after the NIW application is filed. So for today's discussion, our topic is what happens after the NIW application is filed? Please provide some insight on that. Thank you, Isabella. Let me share a screen with you, um, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, uh, Samir, can you please uh, share that slide? Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. So, um, you know, this is a very common question I, I hear from our uh, clients and prospective clients every day, like, hey, uh, let's say my uh, NIW got approved or my NIW actually got approved. So what is the next step? So in this um, discussion, I will uh, try my best to give uh, information about the next step of NIW application as much as I can. And just a, like a uh, you know, disclaimer, this is just for information purpose. This is not a legal advice. Please take it as a as a you know informative seminar kind of things. So once your I-140 is approved, um, you know under NIW category or pretty much any category, then you have to go to the second step. A lot of people they don't know that NIW application for green card has two steps. They just only think the first step, which is I-140, is the only step, which is not true. After your I-140 approval, you have to go to the second step, and it depends on two different scenario what you need to do. Let's say if you are in America, then you have to apply for I-485. However, if you are in a foreign country, let's say in Canada, Mexico, or any other country, then you have to apply for this. The, you have to go through the second step, which is uh, to apply for uh, IVP, immigration visa petition. So first, I will discuss about for the people who are already in America, the I-485 procedure, and then I'll go to the, uh, the other uh, option, which is for the people who are living in a foreign country. If you are living in, in America, you have to submit form I-485 with I-485. Uh, Samir, can you please show the screen? Uh, so, sorry about that. Um, yes, please keep it um, until I say. Okay, so uh, for, the, for the people who are already in America, um, they need to uh, you know, apply I-485. Uh, with I-485, we also su uh, submit form I-131 and I-765. So I-131 and 765, this is not mandatory, but this is highly recommended because this is free. And I-765 application is for work authorization. So if you apply I-7, if you submit the form I-765, you will get a work permit. And with that, you will be able to work. So this is a good thing. And there is no additional filing fee. So why not? Similarly, I-131, this is a travel document. So those who submit I-485, they cannot leave America until your I-485 is approved. You cannot travel outside while your I-485 is pending. 
That's why to solve this issue, because in a lot of people, they need to travel outside. They need to go, to go back to their home country to visit their family members or some other purpose. In that situation, uh, you need a travel document. You need an advanced parole. So this I-131 form is advanced parole. Once it is approved, you'll be able to travel to a foreign country with this approval. That's why this I-131 form, even though it's not mandatory, this is highly recommended that you submit it. And also, this is free. So why, why not you take this opportunity? And with this package, definitely I-485 form has a lot of, you know, it requires a lot of supporting documents that you need to submit. I'm not going that detail because this is just for an information purpose. And also it depends on person to person. That's why, like, just to make sure that you submit all the required documents of I-485, I-131, I-765. Also, you submit, you, you put, uh, you attach your I-140 approval notice. Otherwise, they will not know, like, what I-485 is this for. So you have to attach your I-140 approval notice, filing fee, filing fee depending on many situations. Like if you apply um, just, by, just by yourself, there's a one fee. If you have one spouse, if you have two dependents, if the dependents are 14 years um, or under or 14 years or above. So it, it's a whole new calculation. I'm not going that detail. I'm just saying so you have to uh, provide uh, a fee. Also photograph, uh, you know, U.S. passport size photograph. Uh, the six photograph for each person. So these are the forms and supporting documents for the people who are submitting I-485 uh, for the people who are living in America. Let's talk about for the people who are living in a foreign country. A lot of you probably don't know that people can apply for NIW from all over the world. And a lot of people every year, they apply uh, NIW application, they got approved, and then they need to go to NVC for IVP, immigration visa process. So the difference is I-485, you apply to USCIS. However, um, IVP application, you have to submit to NVC. You have to send a physical copy, not uh, electronic. This is important. Also, you have to fill up the form DS-260. You have to submit I-140 approval notice, like the 485 one, the similar thing. Also, you have to submit your birth certificate. And most important thing is you have to submit police clearance report. And a lot of people, you know, live in different countries in different times. So let's say before applying an IW, you lived in five different countries in your entire life. You have to, uh, entire life means above 18 years of um, old. So if you, any country you lived after your 18th birthday, you have to submit a police clearance report. So let's say after your 18th birthday, you lived in like three different countries. So you have to obtain police clearance report from all those three countries. This is sometimes tricky. This is sometimes hard because in a lot of countries, getting police clearance report is hard. However, you have to get it. This is part of the process. Also, there is a fee. Also, there is some other supporting document that come with DS-260. You have to compile everything and send it to NVC. So this is two parallel process, one for I-485, one for DS-260, depending on where you are. If you're living in America, you will submit I-485. If you live in um, in a foreign country, you will submit um, to NVC, um, DS-260 to NVC. But the, the biggest question is when you will be able to submit this application. A lot, a lot of people, they thought, I mean, they knew that I-140 and I-485 can be submitted together. It is called concurrent application. However, there is a recent development in visa bulletin. And because of this recent development, you cannot submit I-140 and 485 together. That's why you have to wait. Let me, um, let me show you how to determine when to apply for uh, I-485 or you know, DS-260. Let me share and um, present. Share screen. Okay. Isabella, can you see my uh, screen? Mr. Mahajan, I still see. Um... Yes, I can see the new yes. one now. Uh, you can see the new one. Okay. So let me. Um, yeah. So in the visa bulletin. Um, In the, in the visa bulletin, if you go, so, you know, there's a visa bulletin um, department of a state. Uh, they update visa bulletin every month. So, uh, and all, check your visa bulletin in every month. Uh, this is very important. If you go to visa bulletin, uh, you will see there's two major categories. One called family uh, sponsored um, uh, preference. Also, uh, another one is employment 
based uh, preference cases. So for NIW, NIW is the employment based uh, application. That's why you will only follow employment based uh, applications. You will not um, go to the family based. In the employment based category, there is two, uh, another two kind of like, you know, what is called um, chart. One is final action dates for employment based preference. Another one is dates for filing of employment based visa application. So one is final action dates for employment based preference cases. So this final action date is for the people who are submitting I-485 and dates for filing of employment based visa application. These are for the people who are submitting DS-260, their IVP application. However, sometime for the people who are applying I-485, they also need to follow this uh, dates for filing of employment based visa application. And how do you know that? You have to study this thing. This is a very complex calculation. I'm not going to go that detail in this you know, live session because it's kind of hard for me to discuss all those things in uh, one session. So you have to follow it. You have to follow visa bulletin. And once your priority date is present in visa bulletin's second preference category, the, and also there's a calculation about your country. If you're from China, India, you know, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Philippines, there's a different calculation. And people from other countries, they have a different calculation. I'm not going that detail into how to read visa bulletin in this uh, session. I hope you learn it from some other sources. And once your priority date is present in visa bulletin, only then you will be able to uh, apply for, you know, either I-45 or DS-260, depending on your situation. So this is the, you know, the calculation when you'll be able to, um, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, apply for I-485 or DS-260. So that was like a, uh, I know it's, it's, it's very short for this, you know, complex issue, but I tried my best to make it shorter. Otherwise, it would be like in a one hour session. So again, for the uh, once your I-140 is approved, you have to see whether you are living in America or in a foreign country. If you are in America, I-45. If you are in a foreign country, IVP. That means DS-260. When you'll be able to apply for this application, depending on visa bulletin. That was a like a short description of what is the next step of NIW application. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Mahajan. I believe that was very insightful. In a very short amount of time, you have covered a vast um, amount of information. I think our live audience will be very grateful to you. And after that, we have a short um, we have a short session, question and answer session arranged. Already questions have started to flow in. I would like to go th to the first one. This is a question from Mr. Milton Munshi, and he says, Hello, Raju. Please explain the NIW petition for employment base. I am a system engineer from Australia. Is publication important for a professional person? What do you think about that, Mr. Mahajan? Uh, thank you. This is also a very broad question. It would be very uh, hard for me to answer in a short time. So, but let me tell you this. Yes, public. So there, there are two major, um, I would say, categories under NIW. The people who are in academic background, you know, those who have like a PhD degree or are studying PhD, publication citation is very important for them. However, those who are like, you know, working professionals, you know, they're in professional category, publication citation is not very important for them. So let's say you have a master's degree and then you're working uh, for more than a year in a good corporation, good company, and you do not have any publication or citation, that is totally okay. You do not need publication citation. All you need is a master's degree from a reputed university, at least one year experience, and that's it. Then you can apply for NIW. And we have a, a lot of success. Uh, in this kind of categories. So that's the short answer to your question. But if I discuss about the entire NIW procedure, it will be very hard for me to answer. Yes, I hope that answers your queries, Mr. Milton Munshi. Now moving on to the second question of the day, Mr. Ramesh Silvaraj asks, dear lawyer, I would like to check the eligibility to apply for green card. I'm working under H-1B visa. And he provides more background information on himself so he completed his bachelor in India, bachelor in degree of electronical science in the year 2000, where his total year is 15 years of experience, uh, uh, 15 years of education, which was unfortunately discontinued MCA, distance education. Uh, 
He further continues that he has 13 years of IT experience and nine years of non-IT experience. Please let me know if I am eligible for EB2. What do you think about that, Mr. Mahajan? You definitely qualify for EB2 and IW, but the problem is, I, I, again, I'm, I'm really sorry for this situation. I'm, the problem is you're from India. You know, people who are from India, China, Mexico, Philippines, you know, El Salvador, Guatemala, I just told that they have a lot of waiting period. So even though, let's say you're applying NIW today and, you know, let's say after two, three months, your application get approved, your profile looks very good. I'm, I'm really proud of your profile. The problem is, even though your uh, application get approved uh, after two, three months, you have to wait a long time before you can apply for I-485 or, you know, IVP. So since you're from India, you have to go through like some other kind of option, like, you know, EB-1. If you qualify EB-1, that's great. EB-1 has like a less waiting period, sometimes no waiting period at, at all. So I would um, suggest you to, you know, go, you know, like browse some other options, see what is appropriate for you. And if you need, you know, more information, you know, more in-person discussion, I would, uh, you know, encourage you to take an appointment from me. Then I'll be able to like, you know, tell more. But right now, Yes, you qualify for NIW, but there's a long waiting period. If you're okay with that, you should go go ahead with NIW. I hope that answers your queries, Mr. Ramesh Silvaraj. Mr. Shah Turjo Alam says, great session for the students. Thank you, Mr. Mahajan, for all the information. Really helpful. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Turjo, for watching this video. And uh, please ask me any question any week if you have. Um, it, it would be my pleasure to answer all of your questions. Moving on to the next question of the day, Ms. Tanjina Akhtar Moshumi asks, if I apply for normal I-140 now, however, after one to two months, I want to proceed with premium processing. Is it possible? If yes, then what would be my steps? She follows up with another question. I am a citizen of Bangladesh and Australia. I came to the US as a postdoc student, J-1 visa. I have used my Australian passport and traveled from Australia. My question is, do I need a J-1 waiver from Australia and Bangladesh as well? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is a, there's a lot of questions. Um, uh, Samir, can you please show the, the question in the screen? I have to see. Yeah, thank you. So the, the first uh, answer to the first question is, yes, you can submit your I-140 with a regular processing now. And after like a two, three months, if you see that your case is not getting approved, then you can always apply um, for premium processing. For pr premium processing, you have to fill up a form called I-907 and you have to you know, uh, provide information and a, a filing fee of $2,500. And once you submit that to USCIS, they will expedite your application and they will either approve it or deny it. You know, they will do something. So yes, um, you can apply for regular processing and after two, three months, you can apply for premium processing. There's no problem with that. There's no negative thing about that. It's a good thing. The answer to your second question that yeah, you have a dual citizenship from Bangladesh and Australia and you, if you have a, like a J-1 visa, a lot of J-1 visa comes with uh, two-year home requirements. The question is, if you apply for waiver, do you need waiver from both countries? The answer is no. When you applied for this J-1 visa application, the address you mentioned, the address uh, you, know, you mentioned in your application, that is your country of residence. So let's say when you applied for J-1 visa, if you put uh, your address, Australian address, and you know you joined uh, US Embassy in Australia for interview, then you have to get waiver from Australia. However, if you did all this thing in Bangladesh and used Bangladeshi address, then you have to get waiver from Bangladesh. So since you have dual citizenship, we have to see like what country you used to get the J-1 visa, and that would be the country of uh, you know application for waiver. I hope I answered your question. If you have any other question, I'll be happy to answer. Yes, I hope that answers Ms. Moshimi's question. Moving on to the next question for the day. Mr. Fuad bin Taya Bappa asks, is application in SB1 visa affects the student visa application later? What do you think no. about that, Mr. Mahajan? Yeah, thank you, Zabra. No, um, all applications are independent of each other. One will have no impact on the other one. So uh, you're good. You can apply SB1 now and then later if you are, you know, application got denied, you cannot come back to America. You can always apply for F1 visa. That's not a problem. I hope that answers Mr. Fuad's question. Later on, we have Mr. Milton Munshi asking another question, which is, what is your recommendation regarding NIW premium? Uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, it, it, it's hard for me to answer this question. 
Um, you know, the, the one person asked me a question immediately before that if I apply for I-140 with the regular processing and after two, three months, if my case is not approved, then I can apply for a premium processing, right? The answer is yes. I think that is the best approach that will save some time because we see that a lot of cases with just a regular processing, USCIS approves it with like two, three months. So if you get it, you know, approval with two, three months and, and you know, you really don't need approved I-140 at this moment for any reason, then you know why, why you will spend like two thousand five hundred dollar additional. However, if you really need I one forty approval for some reason, and you, if if you do not want to wait like two three months just to see whether it will get approved or not, then you can uh, go ahead with premium processing. I think it's, it depends on your situation, depends on depending on your financial situation also. So either is good. Question is whatever you will pick. Thank you, Mr. Majam, for being so thorough with the questions. Later on, we have Mr. Saiful Islam asking if the EB3 visa will be closed. No, no visa will be closed. So EB3 is a EB3 is a genuine visa. A lot of people, you know, they are worried because uh, with the EB3 visa, like people with no background at all, with a uh, very unskilled uh, background, they can come to America very easily. So a lot of people are worried that EB3 will be, visa will be closed. It will not be closed. However, it's, 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 it's a question of supply demand. You know, the, the entire point of EB2, EB3 visa is employer can only apply for foreign em, uh, employees if they cannot find the local people here in America. So right now, there is a huge shortage of uh, you know, employer, employees here in America, especially in unskilled category, like you know, people who work in restaurants, like gas station kind of place. That's why a lot of people are coming from foreign country under EB3 visa. But let's say five years from now, uh, you know, there is no vacancy at all. Uh, on, only American people are working there. You know, employers are easily getting people. Then there will be less, less approval for EB3. But EB3 category would be there. It, it will not be closed. Thank you for that definitive answer. Mr. Omar Sadat says, I have uploaded the Google assessment form and emailed my resume with professional documents a few weeks back to info at rajalaw.com. When can I get my assessment result to start my process from Roger Law? Thank you. This is another common question we get all the time. The problem is right now we are like, you know, already reached our uh, peak uh, for the number of NIW clients we can handle. So right now we are not taking any new clients at this moment. However, probably within one or two weeks, we'll start, you know, taking new clients again. And uh, but we st we already started uh, evaluating um, cases and you know, sending results to um, prospective clients. Um, I will double check and I'll I'll make sure that all of our all of the people who submitted their you know resume and information for evaluation we do that very soon probably will get it by one week. I hope that answers your queries, Mr. Omar Sadat. Mr. Ahmed Shehab asks, Are you taking NIW cases since I communicated last time? Uh, same same answer. Right now we are not taking any new NIW cases. Probably we will start taking from this at uh, the beginning of March, but. Not sure yet, it depending on like, you know, how much pressure we are in right now at this moment. Hopefully we'll start resume taking new clients from March 1. Okay, and Mr. Saiful Islam asks that if he files for EB3 along with the student visa, will agent banking be a problem? He's currently with Islami Bank, so will agent banking statement be a problem? Uh, no, um, I, I mean, I, number one, I don't know what, what do you mean by agent banking statement i'm not sure like you have to show bank statement for your financial uh, stability but i do not see any problem with um eb uh, eb3 and f1 being parallel there's no problem with that a lot of people they come to america with the f1 visa and once they're in america under f1 visa they apply for eb3 they get approved so yeah no problem i hope that answers your queries uh, Ms. Tanji Nakhtar Moshumi has asked another follow-up question where she says, thank you very much for your kind response in my previous question. I have another follow-up question. I have used Australian address and faced interview from Australia, so I need J-1 waiver only from Australia. Could you guide me where I can get the J-1 waiver details for Australia? Yes, so um, we do not provide this service to get J-1 waiver because um, it is very easy. It's very easy application. First, you have to apply for waiver to the Department of State, U.S. Department of State here in America, and they usually approve it very fast, like within one or two months. Once you get it approved, then you have to apply for waiver to your home uh, embassy, which is like 
uh, Australian embassy in America. And uh, I believe they're also very fast. So you will get it within like, in total, it will take three, four months. First, you have to apply to US Department of State, then to Australian embassy in America. Uh, and then you will get it approved. They have their procedures. So I, I would advise you to contact them. We do not um, work with J-1 waivers because this is not actually immigration process. That's why we don't. I hope that answers your queries, Ms. Moshumi. Uh, Mr. Suhel Rana asks that he has filed for asylum and it has been about two months since he got the work permit and now he wants to change his address. However, he still did not receive the work permit from USCIS, so he's asking if it's going to be a problem if he changes his address now. No, there'll be no problem. I advise you to change your address as soon as possible because the requirement is you change your address within 15 days of moving to a new address. Uh, so uh, since you did not do that, please do it as soon as possible. However, it will not have any any big impact uh, in your case. Try your best to do it fast. And the, 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 the form you need to fill up to change your address is called AR11. A for Apple, R for Roger, 11. And you can do it online. Uh, it's very easy to do. Just do it as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Majan, for that response. Mr. Saiful Islam also asks that where he can file an appointment with you. If you go to our website, uh, there is a uh, option called uh, appointments. You have to click that and there's like a both paid and unpaid appointments. So um, usually it's very hard to get, I mean, uh, unpaid appointments because it's booked for like three, four months. But if you want a paid appointment, you can also take from our website. Everything is in our website. You can go there and take appointments. I hope that answers your queries, Mr. Saiful Islam. Mr. Izazul Hawkridoy asks, I filed asylum. Can I apply for EB3? Yes. Um, yes, but let me uh, um, add some few more sentences. So as long as your asylum case is pending, you can apply for EB3. However, once your asylum case get denied in any immigration court, then you are in deportation proceeding. It doesn't mean that they're going to deport you. The, the name of this process is called deportation proceeding. So once you are in deportation proceeding, then you cannot apply for EB3. Unless and until your case is pending, then you can apply for EB3. I hope that answers your queries, Mr. Ridoy. Mr. Milton Munshi asks again, do you provide recommendation letter template and LOE template for your client regarding NIW petition? Yes. Those who are our clients, when they you know sign, sign our retainer agreement, make our first payment, start working, we provide template and sample for re, uh, letter of recommendation, research summaries, uh, proposed endeavor, everything. Also, we have like a video guideline. If you go to our website, there's a, uh, not a website, sorry. If you go to our YouTube channel, uh, there is a total guideline for how to write those things. I, I make it very easy for everybody. Even if you're not my client, that's okay. You can just go to my YouTube channel, watch those videos everything is very easy easily described and on the top of that yes we provide samples and templates i hope that answers your queries mr milton munshi mr izazul hakrida thanks you for your answers and with that i don't think we have any more questions in flowing at the moment uh thank you very much mr mahajan for your time i'm sure me along with the audience we have been enlightened a great deal regarding the NIW process. And you have, in a very simplified manner, explained a lot of complicated things to us all. Thank you so much for your time today. And to everyone else watching the live today, we will meet you again next Sunday at the same time. Thank you so much and goodbye. Raju Law is one of the top immigration law firms in the USA. 100 officers, including law clerks and case managers, work in different departments under the supervision of attorney Raju Mahajan and other associate attorneys in the United States. The success rate of Raju Law is over 99% in fulfilling the dream of people from other parts of the world. Family-based, employment-based, asylum, and green card-related services are available under one umbrella in Raju Law. In addition, this law firm is one of the best in the United States for obtaining services related to NIW writ of mandamus, and student visas. The headquarter of Raju Law is in Washington, D.C., 
metropolitan area, we have a branch office in Atlanta, Georgia, to reach the services easily of Raju Law to everyone living in Georgia. Besides, we have a country office in Bangladesh. The contact address and phone number are shown for any immigration-related services. You can also email info. Raju Law is your safe address for assistance and advice regarding immigration to America.